Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to address the question, should I take the required minimum distribution if I don't need the income? Well, uh, you're going to understand that RMDs, in my opinion, required minimum distribution is some of the worst advice I've ever heard, but many, many people are told to do that by their tax advisor. So in this episode, I'm going to show you why that is not smart. You should take out not the minimum, probably the maximum, even if you don't need the income and get the taxes over and done with sooner than later, you're going to be far better off if you do this, depending upon where you reposition that after-tax money to be able to empower you with tax-free income the rest of your life. I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a tax strategist for more than 45 years. And a lot of times people think they're saving a tax by uh, putting it off, taking the money out of their IRAs or 401ks until they're 70 and a half. And if you don't start accessing the money out of your IRA or 401k at that point, what happens? The government will penalize you 50% on what you should have pulled out. So let's say you have a million dollar nest egg and you're supposed to pull out uh, 40 or 50,000 that year under the required minimum distribution based upon your LE. Now LE is life expectancy. And so if uh, you have a life expectancy of 20 years, you have to take out 1 20th of that. But every year you are older, uh, your life expectancy is shorter. And so you'd have to take out uh, 1 19th and 1 18th as you get older. So the government wants that money out and taxed before you die. So they can tax you again when you do die. Now, folks, this is the best savings bond they ever came up with for themselves. But a lot of people get duped into saying, oh, let me just take out the minimum if I don't need the income. I go, what does that have to do with it? Well, if I don't need the income, I might as well let it grow tax deferred. I'm going, no, 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 no. You want to get the taxes over and done with sooner than later. Now, this may uh, date me, okay? So... If you're younger and you've never seen this uh, TV ad, it was the Fram and Autolite commercial. And uh, it had this automobile mechanic and he would hold up a, a Fram oil filter and he was standing in front of this car with the engine and he said, well, uh, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. Uh, you can pay me to put in a little oil filter now or you can wait and pay me later and replace your engine. <laughs> you can't believe how many times people I was replacing their retirement engines because they wouldn't get the taxes over and done with sooner than later. I don't care if you need the income or not. The question is, let's get it out in the lowest bracket we possibly can. So when we think about this, there is a, a lot of room in tax thresholds that most people uh, don't realize. For example, I remember... Uh, a married couple filing a joint tax return. If uh, they made in taxable income uh, in excess of uh, 60,000, let's say, they might move into the next higher tax bracket. And it might uh, have been from a 22 to a, to a 25% bracket or a 25 to a 28 or a 28 to a, to a 31. Many times between, let's say an income of 60,000 of taxable income, clear up to 150,000, you're taxed the same rate. And uh, a lot of times people go, oh, no, I don't want to take money out of there. I have to pay tax. I'm going, let's get it over and done with. Well, uh, uh, that will send me into a higher bracket. No. So if your taxable income, let's say that you grossed 80 or 100,000, and after deductions and exemptions, whatever you have, uh, your taxable income that you actually pay tax on is uh, 70 or 80,000. You're already in that higher bracket there of let's say 25% or 28%. You have room all the way from 80,000 up to maybe 150,000 of taxable income. You won't pay any higher rate. And frankly, I don't think you will ever pay a lower rate. Most people, uh, they don't go down in their tax bracket. They go up. Here's the point. 
If you have room to pull out an additional uh, 50, 60, or $70,000 in the same tax bracket, probably the lowest bracket you will ever be in, and you don't use that room, you lose it. And so many times I would say, hey, you've got room to pull out another 50 or $60,000 and, and not uh, pay any higher tax. I remember one couple, I said, you know what, if I were you, I'd even pull, because they had a ton of money trapped in their IRAs or 401ks. I said, I would pull out another 60,000 and you only will pay uh, an extra 3% on that. Oh no, my, my accountant, my bookkeeper, my, it says that you know, you're forcing me into a higher bracket. No, not retroactive back to the first day. You're only paying 3% on the last 60,000. That was uh, 17, $1,800. They go, oh no, I don't want to do that. So they left their money in the market and they lost 30%. See, people, uh, they don't make logical decisions. They, they get into the emotions, I don't want to have to pay tax. They came back to me and said, is there any way we can retroactively go back and pull out 60,000 and only lose an extra 3% in tax instead of 30% because it was in the market? Too late, you lost it. If you don't use the room, you lose the room. So let me give you an actual example of how this works. So for this reason, I developed a special software program that would show people the darkness of the night, so to speak, if they uh, left their money in their IRAs or 401ks, taking the required minimum distributions. And they were often uh, flabbergasted because if they strung it out during their life expectancy and their spouse's life expectancy, assuming their spouse was alive and, and uh, they will leave it behind to them, they were shocked because of the amount of taxes they would pay by just doing the, the minimum and uh, thinking they were saving tax. And many times it would be as much or more than the amount of money that they had saved by age 70 and a half. They would owe in tax by continuing to defer. Then my software would show, let's do a strategic rollout. Let's get the money out and the taxes over and done with uh, maybe over a five, six, or seven year period. So we would study every year when they came in uh, how much room they had between this tax rate and the next tax rate. Sometimes the next tax rate was, like I said, only about 3%, sometimes it's 5%, but I would ask them, do you think future tax rates are gonna be <laughs> lower? No. You think they're gonna be the same? I don't think so. Do you think they're gonna be higher? Yeah. Well, then why do you want to keep postponing? Let's get the taxes over and done with. And so every year when we would uh, get together, we would look at how much room and it might be 60,000. We might even take out another 60, 70 or 100,000 uh, at an extra 3%. And down the road, they were always thanking me for getting the taxes over and done with because Congress would do something and take away a deduction or increase the tax rates. But here's the end of the story. At the end of five, six, or seven years, they would put their arm around me and say, Doug, this, you, you said this was gonna be incredible, but uh, we have many couples, for example, that by using that room between their taxable income and how much they could pull out of IRAs or 401ks, whether they need the income or not, get it out, the tax is over with. Now, we do reposition it into what I call the laser fund, so it'll be tax-free from now on, and when they pass away, it blossoms and reimburses any tax they did pay. So they're not out anything if they do the strategies that I teach in my various educational courses and my books. But the point is this, they were tax free from there on. I remember a couple that when we got them to the end of the day, uh, we weren't able to save them uh, all of the tax. We saved them only 1.2 million. <laughs> They had uh, nearly five million in their IRAs or 401ks. But when we talked to their tax advisor, CPA, first, I said, you know what? They're going to pay about 2.4 million in taxes if they keep taking RMDs and don't take it out because they don't need the income. And do you know what the accountant said? They can afford that. I, I, I said, what? You wouldn't believe how many times accountants have uh, said, oh, they can afford that. 2.4 million, I said, now I can't save them all of that, but I saved them half of it, 1.2 million. I simply said, what would you rather pay, 2.4 or 1.2 million in tax? We took that otherwise payable tax, 1.2 million, and we set up a family bank for them. Uh, you probably don't know what it is, but when I explain it in my other episodes, everybody wants one. 
That $1.2 million generates 100,000 a year of tax-free cash flow that would have gone down the drain in unnecessary tax that allows their kids, their grandkids, their posterity, their church, their charities, the Boy Scouts, the Red Cross to have all kinds of uses for that money, vacations with the purpose, grandpa's camp, all the things they love to do. If they just rolled over and paid the tax, it would be gone. Folks, I've never met anybody, Republican or Democrat, that when I show them the pie chart of where our government uses our tax dollars, okay? Now, I don't actually show them the percentage. I say, here's the various categories. If you voluntarily could choose where your public dollars go, what we contribute back to society, they, it never comes close to where our government allocates it. How did we get here? If you can take control, if you can redirect otherwise payable taxes to causes you support, I think you would want to do that and then you'll have a more abundant life. And frankly, you'll do more for this great country than just rolling over and paying a bunch of unnecessary tax. So should you take out the required minimum distribution even if you don't need the income? No, I would recommend you look at it the other way. Get the taxes over and done with sooner than later in today's lower rates. Reposition that money into something that's going to be tax-free from now on and that will blossom and reimburse you. And if you want, you can watch some of these other episodes to understand how you can offset some or all of the tax during the rollout process, maybe by resurrecting new deductions. So click here and also uh, look for an opportunity to, to receive a free copy of my book, The Laser Fund, to read about many, many stories of people that we've empowered to be able to do what I've been talking about.